In this video, I'm going to show you 10 basic Linux commands that every beginner needs to know. This is a perfect video if you're just getting started out with Linux or the command line. So let's hop on into it. Okay, I'm on my Mac computer. You can also be using a Linux computer. They share the same set of commands for the most part. What I'm going to do is open up a terminal window, okay? And this is pretty much equivalent to opening up like a Finder window or a Windows Explorer window. What we're going to do first right off the bat is show you how to navigate around kind of like we do when we click into these folders drag and drop things all that stuff that's what we're going to do in the command window here the terminal window so first thing let's know where we're at within the file system okay and we can do that with pwd that shows us that we're in the users tony florida directory okay over here we can do the same exact thing we can open up the Tony Florida directory and now we are in the users Tony Florida directory in this window as well. So what if we want to see the contents of this directory? So there's a bunch of folders in here. We do that with the ls command. So ls is shorthand for list. And here you can see the same exact folders that are up top here in the finder window are down here in the terminal window. Now. What if we wanted to go into one of these folders, right? So here's our desktop. The desktop's in the background as well. We can double click in the finder window to go to our desktop and we can do the same thing in the terminal window with the CD command. So CD stands for change directory and you just type CD followed by the name of the folder that you want to go into. So CD desktop, D-E-S-K-T-O-P, hit enter. Now we are on the desktop, but how do we know that? Well, we already have the PWD command that tells us where we are, so we can run that one again. And it, indeed, we are at users Tony Florida desktop. Same thing up here, users Tony Florida desktop. And to see the contents of the desktop, we can use our ls command again with ls. So I do have these two folders on my desktop, my folder and stuff. I think at this point you know how to go into the my folder directory so we can do cd my folder my dash folder we can do that up here too and just like we've been doing we can do pwd just to make sure we are in the right place so desktop my folder we are we could do an ls to see what's in there and that does reflect the documents and the pictures folder same thing up here documents and pictures and now we can go one more level. Let's go into the pictures folder. So CD pictures. Okay, we'll open that up here as well. And what is in here? LS, there is a picture of a toilet and uh, a picture of my YouTube banner. Okay, both of them are PNG files. Now, there's no more folders to go into. So how do we go back? Okay, so up here in in uh, Explorer, um, in the Finder window, we just click this button to go back, and that'll take us back a directory. In the terminal window, you're going to use CD, and the syntax for going up a level or back a level is dot dot. Okay, so that will take us from where we are up a level into the My Folder directory, and we can confirm that with PWD that we're back in the My Folder directory. Now, the thing about LS is that it shows you what's in your current directory, but you can also give ls an argument and say, I wanna know what is in the documents directory. I don't wanna go into the documents directory, I just wanna take a peek at and see what's in there. So you can do ls documents. And now we already know that there's a PDF file and a readme file in there. So let's confirm that that's actually the case up here. We're gonna open that up and indeed there is a PDF file and a text readme file in there as well. Okay, so now that you have a good idea about how to navigate around the file system, I'm gonna show you a couple more commands on how to copy, move, and delete files. So, where are we here? Let's do the PWD. We are in the My Folder directory, and here we have the Documents and Pictures folder. So let's go into the Documents directory, see what we got in here, confirm where we are. And what we're gonna do first, right off the bat, is to make a copy of the readme file, the readme.txt file. And the way we can do that is with the cp command, the copy command. And this takes two arguments. The first one is the name of the file that you want to make a copy of, so readme.txt. And the next one is the name of the file that you want to copy it into. So for this, let's just call it readme1.txt. 
Okay, so we're going to copy the contents of readme.txt into a new file called readme1.txt, and we should see that happen in real time up here. So I'm going to hit enter, and there is our new file. As you can see here, we have a readme file and a readme1 file as well. And they're both 70 bytes in size. They're both text files, and here's the times that they were created. And we can actually see the same type of information when we go to the command line. So we've, we've been using the ls command uh, to see the contents of this directory, and there's our new file here, but we can actually pass an argument to the ls command, the dash l argument, to list out those files with details. So here you can see a whole bunch of permissions, which we're not going to get into this video, the owner of the file, the, the group that the file is associated with, and then the number of bytes that this the file is so this is what is that 333,000 bytes the date that it was uh, last modified and the name of the file so I don't really find showing the file sizes in bytes very useful I kind of like seeing the units associated with it kilobytes or bytes so in order to do that we can also use the ls command uh, we'll combine it with the l flag and we'll add one more flag the H flag, which stands for human readable, and it's going to print out the exact same information here, except this time we're going to have those units that I was talking about. So uh, 326 kilobytes, 70 bytes, and 70 bytes for the two readme.txt files. Now, let's get rid of this extra readme text file that we just created, and we can delete it with the rm command, which stands for, or short for remove. So go ahead and type rm readme, and here's, I'm going to show you a trick at this point. So you can, for any file or folder that exists when you're on the command line in your current directory, you can use the tab key to automatically complete the rest of that file name. So I'm going to hit tab here, and it's going to type me automatically without me actually doing anything. And that's because it found two files, one named readme.txt and one named readme1.txt. So now if I put a 1 next on the keyboard and then hit tab, it's going to finish the rest of that file name because there's only one file that starts with readme1. So it knows that we're referencing readme1.txt. So anyway, back to deleting this file, we can execute the rm readme1.txt command and that's going to delete that file and you can watch it up here in finder in real time that will go away so let's do that and that file is gone as we would expect it to be gone so the other thing I want to show you is how to move files around so this is going to be you know equivalent of let's move let's move the readme.txt file uh, up a level into this directory and in finder you would just drag it, come up here, and drop it. It's a drag and drop kind of operation. Put it back, drag it, drop it. Let's do that with a command, okay? So we can do that with the move command, MV. So move, we're gonna move the readme, and I'm gonna use my tab complete from this point forward. We're gonna move the readme text file. Now, if you remember, those two dots, that meant we would go back a level when we're changing directory. Well, we can also do that with the move command. So we're going to reference a level above us. Where are we at now? We are in the documents folder. So we're going to move the readme.txt file from the documents folder into the my dash folder. So if we execute that, we should see this disappear. And if we go up a level, we will see the readme.txt file has been put into my folder. Now, if we want to put it back, we don't have to change directories into that folder we could, but we can do it right from here where we're at. Where are we again? Let's double check that. We are in the documents folder. So what we want to do is move from up a level from us, and now we're going to have to give it the path syntax with the slashes. So from these two dots represent we're going from the documents folder to now we're in my folder. So we're moving the file in my folder called readme.txt, and we'll use the tab complete here. So we're moving readme.txt to this current directory that we're in right now. And the syntax for that is just a dot. The dot means the current directory that you're in. 
So what we should see again is this disappear, hit enter. And if we go up a level back into, well, we can double click on documents. And now we see the readme.txt file in here. The one, last, the one last cool thing that you can do with um, the move command is to rename a file. Okay, so what, what if I wanted to rename this file to readme2? On the finder uh, window, I could just do that and it changes the file name. But in the command line, we actually use the move command to do that. So if we want to rename readme.txt to readme2.txt, we can say move readme.txt to readme2.txt. And it's essentially a move, same kind of same thing as a rename. It's just going to rename that file from readme to readme2. So let's execute that and see what happens. And there you can see that reflect in the finder window. This file is now called readme2. And if we wanted to rename it back, we can do move readme2.txt to readme.txt. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to create a folder. Typically in a finder window, you can simply right click anywhere, create a new folder, call it whatever you want. Okay. Uh, we're not going to keep this one. We'll just move that to trash. Actually, you know what? Undo that. We're going to use the rm command to delete that folder. So if you say rm, let's confirm that that file is there. So there's now a, a folder called Tony. rm Tony. Oh, it doesn't like that. Tony is a directory. There is a flag that you have to give to the rm command when you try to delete a folder. So that flag is rm-r. The r stands for recursive. And then we can give it the folder name Tony and that folder will go away. Okay, so keep that in mind. We'll be using that in a little bit after we create our folder. So let's create our folder. This is going to be with the mkdir, which is short for make directory. Very, very simple. Make directory, let's make our Tony folder again. Make directory, T-O-N-Y, hit enter. You'll see the same exact type of thing pop up here. And now that we know how to delete that folder, we can do rm-r. Tony. Hit enter and it's gone. So just like we created a new folder, we can also create a new file. There's not really an easy way to do that in at least a Mac computer through the finder window, um, but it's really super easy to do it in a terminal window. So in order to create a new file, you can either open it with a text editor, but the most simple way with just one single command is the touch command. So touch and then the name of a file that you want to create. Let's make a file called hello.txt. Okay, and if we do that, it's simply going to create a, this text file right here. It's zero bytes in size. It was just created today at 9.28 a.m. Super easy to do that. Um, also, what's really cool with the touch command is if a file already exists and you touch it, it's going to update the date modified time. So right now you can see readme.txt was created way back August 22nd, 2021. If I execute the touch command on readme.txt, you'll notice that the date modified timestamp will change to right now. So let's do that. And you can see now that it has a date modified time of today at 9 or 8.29 a.m. So uh, there is some use cases where that is important that you need to update the timestamp of a file and that's what the touch command would do. It doesn't actually change the contents of that file at all. Okay, so it's just gonna change the timestamp, that's all. Um, if we do wanna see the contents of these files that we've been working with, so readme.txt, hello.txt, on in the finder window, you can simply hit your spacebar to see a quick, uh, uh, idea of what the text is in there. Same thing on the command line, you can do cat for concatenate. That's the shorthand. Uh, and then the name of the file. So cat readme.txt. That's going to print out that the, the contents of that file onto the command line. And if we cat hello.txt, there's nothing in there. So we're not going to get anything out of that. Now we're going to shift gears just a little bit and talk about variables. And we can. Uh, use the echo command to echo some variables. Now, let's forget I said anything about variables for a second. Um, I just want to show you the echo command by itself. It's kind of a silly thing to do, but if we 
use echo and then you give it some text, it's just gonna spit that text back out on the command line, kind of like we saw with the cat command. So echo, let's echo hello. It's gonna say hello. Echo hello Tony. It's gonna say hello Tony. So it's kind of like a parrot, right? A parrot, whatever you say, the parrot's gonna say it back to you. That's what the echo command does. Now I said something about a variable. There are system variables, environmental variables in uh, the Mac and Linux operating systems. I won't go into that too much, but the way you can access one of the most common variables on the system is with, uh, you can see what the value is with echo dollar sign user. Okay, so this is just a known variable that exists on the system, and it's just going to contain the username of the logged in user. So my username is Tony Florida, and you can see now that we echoed the value of that variable, it puts it back onto the command line for us. So we can combine the echo command and, and what we've been doing before with hello. So we can say echo hello dollar sign capital user, and it's going to say hello Tony Florida. So that's pretty cool. Now the reason I'm bringing all of this up is because this hello text file up here is empty. If we wanted to add some information, some text into it, we can use a redirection to take basically this right here and put it in as contents of the file. So that's gonna look something like this. Hello, or it's gonna say echo, hello, Tony Florida. And we're gonna redirect that to a file called hello.txt, which that file already exists up here. Um, so what that's gonna do is put this text into that file. So let's execute that. And we can confirm that in one of two ways. We can concatenate that on the command line. So let's see what the contents of hello.txt looks like now. And it does have those two words in there, hello, Tony Florida. And then we can also check it on Finder, hello, Tony Florida. That's about it for this one. I have this video right here, which will teach you some more advanced Linux commands. And this video down here, which will teach you how to use a text editor on the command line, specifically Vim. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you over there.